Um, hi everyone, my name is Yuli. I'm a solutions engineer from HashiCorp. I'm based in Sydney, Australia. Um, so I've been with HashiCorp for three years. Um, so without further ado, let's drill into the details. All right, so um, for today's topic, if you really want to enjoy the contents, there are some um, expectations. So we, we expect that you have certain knowledge on Kubernetes. You are operating a Kubernetes somewhere and you are looking to integrate Vault as a secret management solution uh, while your application is running in a Kubernetes environment. So you would need some Kubernetes in, uh, experience and some uh, Vault experience. Um, you need to understand some of the concept in Vault like authentication, authorization, policy, and a secret engine. All right. So. Uh, Let's talk about the challenge first. So uh, when we manage the Kubernetes secrets, uh, we all know as a, uh, as a Kubernetes admin, um, it's pretty hard to manage. But if we look at um, the fundamentals, so how do we define uh, secrets um, in applications? So in HashiCorp, we say secrets is a sensitive information that you want to protect. It can be anything. It could be a PKI certificate could be a JOT token, could be a, just a static QV that, um, and the database credential, any sort of credential. In an ideal world, you want this application, the secrets to only be viewable by your application and no one else. But in reality, um, before we have the secrets in the application, at least you need to have it um, in the Kubernetes side. So this is one example where I have created a Postgres credential secrets and I saved it in JSON. It's secrets, Kubernetes secrets is a Kubernetes object that is used to save secrets. Um, the challenge with this is that everyone or anyone with access to the Kubernetes with the right credential, it will be able to pull the secrets. As we can see, this is base 64 uh, format uh, where you can just easily decode. So that's the number one issue with Kubernetes secrets. Um, it's essentially just like a config map. It's not a secret. It's not encrypted at rest. Uh, anyone with uh, basic access to it will be able to see it. Now, this person that's managing the Kubernetes, that's you and me, actually exposes a kind of risk uh, to the secret. Now, if this is not enough. Let's even think more about how do we actually put the secrets into Kubernetes in the first place. Generally, you would put this into your manifest file in, in your YAML file. Um, say, for example, in here, this is the YAML file where I defined my secrets, right? So I defined my secrets and I have my username and password. And I obviously uh, base64 encode them before I put this into my YAML file. This presents a different set of challenge. So number one, it's really hard for me to debug this and I need to make sure everything is by 64 encoded, right? And number one, I need to, uh, number two, I need to save this in a Git repository where all the team members uh, will have access to. Uh, then the, the, the challenge comes as whoever can read this YAML file or whoever have that access to, uh, the Git repository will be able to know easily about the secrets. Now you have additional set of people that have a potential to leak the secret. Now with this, um, it's really, uh, really, really challenging. Now this is uh, in, in, in the screen, there is only one secret. So it's really a simple secret. If we have more secrets, uh, if you have more workload, a different workload will have different kind of secrets. Um, the problem just to multiply themselves. Um, you have secrets everywhere. You have secrets in Kubernetes cluster itself, in, in Git, and sometimes in, on people's laptop. Um, you have no way of monitoring like who have access to, who has read the secrets, who have used the secrets. Have I made sure that these people after seeing these secrets, he hasn't took a screenshot or haven't write it down a, uh, on the post notes, right? Uh, Post-it notes, um, stick it on, onto my uh, screen. Uh, that's the sort of issue we, we are facing as 
a application owner. If we want to run our, our applications, we have so many uh, risks to worry about. All right, so um, in terms of what you need really is um, if you would have a solution that would work with Kubernetes and manage the secrets properly, you would at least have this kind of uh, properties you need. So the number one is it has to be a first class citizen of Kubernetes to integrate well with Kubernetes, uh, work with Kubernetes authentication and authorization, uh, the, 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 the security module. And it makes a secret a real secret, like we encrypt it instead of just base 64, which is not enough. And also provide a better RBAC. Uh, in Kubernetes, RBAC is pretty difficult. Uh, you can only define whitelist, like what you can access. Uh, you cannot define a, a blacklist, which makes um, managing RBAC access in Kubernetes fairly complicated, let's say. Uh, the third one is the nature of the secrets itself. Uh, most of the secrets in the real world uh, would have a time to live. Say, for example, we have a database credential. Um, some um, regulatory body would require you to rotate this every six months or every three months and stuff like that. Um, if you could attach a metadata to these dynamic secrets, uh, to these secrets, uh, this metadata being the time to live, then uh, it will make the management, the life, full life cycle, the rotation of the secrets much, much easier. Right? So by default, the Kubernetes secrets doesn't have ability to do dynamic secrets. And, and obviously, with the latest version of Kubernetes, uh, they introduced some short-lived uh, tokens, but that's not, uh, that's not a secret. Uh, it's, um, uh, tokens are one, sort of, one kind of secrets. Uh, it doesn't apply to other kind of secrets. And also, um, most importantly, um, you want to make your solution transparent to work, existing workload. You don't want to refactor your applications and rewrite your manifest files and do all the work to, to do the migration. So really, this is uh, what you need uh, for a proper Kubernetes secret management solution. Now, in reality, Vault is the solution. So uh, here I have taken a screenshot from a um, CNCF uh, a secret management radar, a technology reader. Uh, they did that uh, early last year. And in this radar, you can see that um, HashiCorp Vault and Cert Manager are the only two cross cloud solution that is in the adopt field. And here is some data. We can see that HashiCorp Vault gets the highest rating. Um, in fact, in real world, HashiCorp Vault has become the, the de facto standard for secrets management in, in, um, in Kubernetes. All right, so this is why you need Vault. Uh, let's look at uh, how we actually do the Vault, how Vault works. Um, as mentioned before, you want to have an identity uh, for any workload so that they can prove themselves to, to, uh, to your workload. And then after prove themselves, they will be able to give an, an access to a secret. Then they can use these the secrets to do whatever they need to do. Uh, Vault exactly is like this. What you can do is um, your workload can use their Kubernetes Jolt token to prove their identity with Vault. Vault will then take that token and talk to your Kubernetes backend and validate um, that this is a valid service account. Um, and then based on that, Vault has um, an authorization policy. Say, for example, your web app would have access to um, your application tier. Uh, you would have access to a token that can help you to access the application tier. You will then be given an access. So in this case, your workload don't need a additional layer of credential to talk to Vault. You only need to present your JOT token, uh, that your Kubernetes JOT token, and the Vault will be the broker and authenticate you against your Kubernetes backend once it have uh, proved itself uh, and with the right authorization, you will have access to the secrets. So the first thing obviously to do is to set up uh, Vault Kubernetes authentication. So um, here I have 
number of steps that you need to do to configure Vault to talk to Kubernetes. We're going to flip through them uh, really quickly. All right. But before we jump into the details, uh, here is a link to um, our documentation site. Uh, you can follow the command line exactly um, according to the link, and you will have a working um, will have a working Kubernetes Kubernetes authentication method. So let's look into this. In order to set up Kubernetes authentication, the number one is to enable a authentication engine inside Vault, so that Vault can um, have that pass enabled. Then you need to configure the authentication, like which, which token Vault could use to validate consumer's job token. And then you need to create a role. This role will represent the user and what that role will have access to. Uh, that's defined in a Vault policy. So the policy will link the role to um, the Kubernetes, um, to, uh, to a Vault secrets. Uh, ob obviously, we want to create some uh, namespaces and service accounts for your application and for Vault to, to communicate to. So let's, uh, let's look into the details. Um, so in this exercise, I'm assuming that you are running Vault inside your Kubernetes. However, the vault can be running outside. Uh, so that's a different topic. We're assuming that you have vault inside a Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. uh, this is very easy. You just SSH to the vault um, box and enable secrets engine. Then you need to configure your secrets engine. So basically you need to tell vault where is your, your, your Kubernetes control plane and the jolt token that can be used for vault to validate other consumers' vault token, uh, 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 JOT token, and then the Kubernetes CA certificate. Right. So it's fairly easy. So the first one is you, you need to find your uh, Kubernetes uh, control plane from vault point of view. This is an IP address. And then on the box, on the vault box itself, you would have access to a, a token. This is delivered to you by Kubernetes um, automatically to, to your vault pod. Same to the CA certificate. So once you do that, your will, vault will gain the ability to talk to vault and uh, validate other, um, other workloads job token. So after that, uh, we need to define a vault um, role. So in this case, we have defined a role say uh, it's called internal app this internal app role will be associated with a vault policy that's called internal app it can then be bound to a kubernetes service accounts these accounts could be your application uh, service accounts and also the namespace it belongs to uh, in here we also define that this token um, um, once it's authenticated with a vault, it will get a token that can last for 24 hours. So let's look at the, uh, the policy. Uh, so internal app policy basically grants you read access to a given pass. Now we would notice that this RBAC control, this level of RBAC control is much, much more detailed, much, much more fine grained than the Kubernetes out of box RBAC control. So in the capabilities uh, place you have uh, in Vault, you have ability to up, update, create, uh, read, delete, uh, or, or options. All right, so we then created the Kubernetes account, uh, service account uh, under a names, names, namespace default. Then this is ready. A, a user has been onboarded. Um, and your application will be able to uh, use these service accounts to run the application. Now, this is the authentication uh, so far. We talked about how Vault authenticates uh, workloads with the Kubernetes control plan uh, to use a JOT token. Uh, it needs to have a JOT token review uh, capability uh, to validate uh, workloads identity, service accounts identity. Now, next step is once you authenticate a workload, how do I deliver the secrets to you? This is um, the main contents of this uh, webinar. Now, 
this is the different op uh, options that you can put a secret or deliver a secret to, uh, to a workload that's running on Kubernetes. Uh, by the way, we HashiCorp don't publish a, a official guide. So this, this is just my personal opinion. Uh, so don't take this as an official guide. So the first step is, uh, is your application voter aware? Um, I guess if you have the control of the source code of your application, uh, whether it's Python, uh, Java, Spring, um, Golan, or whatsoever, HashiCorp do provide um, some SDK for you to, to, to use directly. So in that case, if you do have completely source control and you don't mind change your source, uh, your code to, to talk to Vault, then you could just use that. Your application can talk to Vault directly. All you need to do is to um, uh, let your application know where the Vault server is running. Right? It could be external or could be just internal as a service running in your Kubernetes. And your application code need to handle the authentication, basically using the JOT token and handling the renewal, the read of the secrets, the renewal of the secrets, stuff like that inside application. Sometimes this may sound a bit too much. Now, remember um, in previous slides, we talked about what are you looking for? What you should look for, for a proper Kubernetes secrets management solution. One of the criteria is that this should remain application transparent, right? So application don't need to be aware of vote. So if you do have application that you don't want to make it vote aware, you have three other options. So from the left, uh, this was our first option. We, 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 we supported this kind of uh, way um, a long time back. So um, we, we call this a vault agent init container. And in this way, we basically use a init container uh, to, to authenticate on your behalf to vault, uh, grab a secret and put a secret into a local drive uh, for your pod. So before your pod is uh, ready. So when your, when your pod is started, uh, the secret should be already rendered on a file uh, in a file system. The second way is um, more advanced. Um, this needs um, some, um, um, the approach we take is sidecar container, uh, which means you will always have a sidecar container running alongside with your pod, uh, inside your pod, uh, along with your, your, your application uh, containers. The sidecar container will authenticate on your behalf using the JOT token that's in the pod, pod talk to Vault, grab the secrets, render it into the local drive and for you ready to use. Uh, but one additional benefit it provides over the agent uh, init container is that it can handle the renewal of the secrets, the rotation of the secrets. So whenever the secrets change, in, uh, in Vault, uh, Sidecar Container can pull the secrets automatically for you. Right? The third option is, well, if you don't want a native container, and if you don't want a Sidecar Container, because Sidecar, sidecar Container uh, adds a pod uh, to every single, uh, uh, to every single pod, um, it might be considered a little bit heavy, so if you want to use the, the, uh, the other option, uh, we could have a um, CSI volume, so the container storage interface. Um, so a vault secrets, um, uh, this way, um, you will have a daemon set on each of the Kubernetes node. Uh, that daemon set, uh, whenever a, a pod needs a secret, uh, before the pod is initialized, uh, the daemon set will then authenticate on your behalf, render the secrets, and save the secrets into a file, into a CSI um, uh, volume. So when your pod is up, your pod will see the file, the, the secrets um, as part of the uh, file system. Now I have highlighted some key difference uh, since marked in red, uh, considered uh, not so good, I would say. Say, for example, if you want to use init container or CIS uh, volume, you need to change your deployment. Uh, 
which basically means this is not completely transparent to, to the developers. Plus uh, the init agent or init container or CIS um, um, method doesn't support secret rotation. So when rot when secrets inside vault change, um, this daemon set and init container wouldn't pull the latest secrets and run it on the volume. So it's very obviously that we can see personally, I prefer the sidecar uh, secret in injection. Uh, the only problem with this is that you requires a uh, helm. Uh, sometimes if you don't have helm, if you're running a OpenShift cluster that's fairly old and, uh, and you don't want to have helm, then um, you can't really use the agent sidecar secret injection method. All right, so Let's, without further ado, let's look into the implementation detail of this three um, of this three method. So the first way um, actually is a vault aware part. That's if your application is vault aware. Um, so this is applying for a pod. This is for pod definition. You can see uh, we actually have a, a image that demos this. It's a Ruby application. All you need to know, all you need to provide is vault address and the vault role. Right? Remember that vault role has been configured in previous step in the authentication side where you created an identity, which is a role, so that the application will be able to um, talk to the um, vault via the vault address and use its JOT token to authenticate and, uh, and get, a, uh, get a, a vault role. So that in turn, the vault role in turn will give it access to some secrets. This is the easiest way. So these are some codes you can see. It's talking to vault URL and using the JOT token that's presented on the pod um, automatically. In the result, in return, you will get a vault token. So from here, your application can use this vault token to keep getting your secrets, and keep your token renewed and the application will be up and running. So I'm going to skip some of the details. So the next one is um, um, the secret injection with agent injector. So let's, uh, let's, uh, let's look into the detail. Now the sidecar pattern is like this. Um, if we have a pod that is not um, vault aware, the authentication and the secret retrieval are fully uh, offload to the sidecar container, vault sidecar container. So which means that every pod that want to grab a secret from vault need to have this sidecar container um, injected. And this sidecar container, well, all, all it needs is a, where is my vault and the role and where can I grab my secrets. Now, in order to do this, uh, we actually introduced a vault agent injector service. Um, uh, this service is uh, monitoring the, uh, the, the, the uh, webhook and watch for Kubernetes events. Uh, in this case, if there is any pod creation or pod upgrade, uh, it will then watch for the annotation and take actions based on the annotation uh, that you have defined. So again, with this uh, method, you have no need to change your deployment. Uh, everything will be done for you uh, by the agent injector automatically. So your existing deployment doesn't change. All you need to do is patch the annotation and to say this is um, now uh, agent in a vault enabled and you want agent injector to inject the secrets for you. So let's look into the details. Now in this place, uh, Basically, you can patch your application to say that I want agent injector. Right? And this is my role for my application. And this is where I can retrieve my secrets. And that's it. Once you define this, yeah, so this, will, uh, this line will enable the agent injector. Um, so when you apply this, when you patch your application, um, 
the, uh, the mutation API, uh, the, the services, the vault injector services will watch for the mutation API and uh, um, looking for uh, incoming change. And if this is uh, the incoming change, it will just do the injection for you. Uh, so this is the vault role uh, that will allow you to have access to a given secrets. This is the secrets. Cool. So all you need to do is once you apply that, um, you can then log into the container and you will see that the container uh, will have um, the secrets in a given directory. Now, if we think one step further, this is just getting you the data, getting you the secrets into a file. Um, vault agent or the, uh, the, the sidecar injection method also provides mechanism that you can um, render a config file based on the secrets. So uh, basically config file templating. Uh, this is an ability that, um, that's only provided by this method. Um, uh, the, the CSI driver will only give you access to secrets, but it won't be able to generate a customized config file um, so that your application don't have to deal with um, the secrets file directly. All right, so the third one is um, secret injection with uh, CSI, uh, container storage interface. This is um, a, a standard, uh, CS, CS, CSI is a standard that um, um, exposing some file storage system to container uh, workload. Now, what we have is if you want to use this method, you first need to have CSI enabled. Second, you need to have a Vault CSI provider enabled because that Vault CIS provider uh, will be uh, becoming the, uh, the bridge or the proxy between the CSI driver and Vault. Right. Um, a volume are basically directory that's accessible to the containers via pod. So let's look into the details. Um, these are where you can find the uh, secret store CIS driver. Uh, these are the first step, the first plugin you need to install into your Kubernetes. So once you store the Kubernetes, um, uh, once you install that secret store CIS, you then need to install the vault provider, uh, vault CIS provider. Uh, but as you can see, uh, the provider is just a few months old. Um, it's, uh, let's see, let's see the details. Now, um, in this case, we have, um, also used the um, Helm chart to install HashiCorp Vault. In this case, we said that we don't want injector, but we want the CIS um, driver enabled. So those are the steps. Uh, you need to install the secret store CIS driver, then define a, a secret provider class Kubernetes resource, and then change your application, change your pod uh, uh, so that it can access the volume. So let's look into the details. Uh, the first one obviously is to install the CIS driver. And then we need to define a secret provider class, right? a secret provider class. In this case, we are using a vault CIS provider in this provider, we have configured like where is my vault? In this case, you can see we have vault running inside of the Kubernetes cluster, but nothing prevents you from running vault outside of the Kubernetes cluster. And then the role name, the vault role name that you want to use. And then where is my secret? And how do I want to save my secret? Right. So this is in case if you're running your Kubernetes, uh, running your vault inside Kubernetes as, as a pod. Uh, these are the 
uh, the Kubernetes authentication role that's internal only to vote. And uh, then this is um, say where to save the secrets and where to get to the secrets and which key from the secrets I want to use. So uh, once you apply that, you'll be fine. So now let's look at um, this. Uh, in your um, application, you will then um, define, change your application to define a volume months. So in this month, you will be able to define like, um, where do I mount, mount it, right? Is it read only? Uh, like which path should I mount my secrets? And once you have that, So you define the volume and inside the volume, the CIS define the secret store driver. And specify the secret provider class. Now you then apply your application. Your application will then have access to the secrets. So if we log into um, the application, you will be able to see that um, this is a file name. This is the path we defined in the CIS and the contents of the file, which contains secrets. All right, so that's all 